It's been 2.5 long years, but Apple has finally done it. They have updated one of my favorite computers in recent memory, the 24 inch iMac and, and why Apple? Why did you have to make this video so difficult? Because I wanted to love this computer and I do, but you made some really weird decisions with this iMac update that have just made me so confused and so conflicted. All right, let me get the good news out of the way first. So listen, everything that I loved about the 24 inch iMac, it's still here. You're still getting a beautiful all-in-one machine that looks impossibly thin and a wide array of color choices that is quite unlike any other product in Apple's lineup. It harkens back to the old colorful designs of the original iMac and I love the design of the 24 inch iMac. They literally did not need to change a thing about how this entry level iMac looks and they didn't. So what is new with the 24 inch iMac? What makes this an upgrade? Well, uh, there's not really much new here besides a pretty significant chip swap from the M1 chip to the M3 chip. Yes, you're not crazy. Apple completely skipped over putting the M2 chip into the 24 inch iMac and it is just bringing it right to the new M3 chip. In fact, this and the new base model M3 MacBook Pro are the first M3 Macs available. So it actually holds some advantages right now over Apple's other desktops like the M2 Mac mini. Now the M3 chip itself is a pretty straightforward upgrade. It still has an eight core CPU design and a 10 core GPU design, which is the same CPU and GPU core counts found in the previous M2 chip. But Apple is touting that the M3 is two times faster than the M1 chip. And they are really targeting Intel iMac users with this upgrade saying that the M3 chip is four times more powerful than the fastest 21.5 inch Intel iMac and 2.5 times faster than the fastest 27 inch Intel iMac. And those things could be pretty beefy. So that's actually quite an achievement for Apple's entry level chips. I mean, the M3 you know, chip in this iMac is capable of hardware accelerated ray tracing. So that's actually kind of cool to see. Now, because this iMac skipped the M2 generation, that also means that this is the first Apple Silicon iMac that now gets more memory configurations. So previously the M1 iMac maxed out at 16 gigabytes of unified memory, but with the M3 chip, you can now spec out an iMac to 24 gigabytes of unified memory. This is a little nice upgrade if you plan to turn your iMac into a workstation, because even though it isn't packing the most powerful M3 Pro or M3 Max chips, the M3 chip is still going to be fast enough to edit video or photos or do a lot of other professional level tasks that you maybe wouldn't even expect an entry level Mac to be capable of, but it can. There's also two other smaller upgrades that the iMac gets now. So it does now support the faster Wi-Fi 6E protocol, and it does also support Bluetooth 5.3. Now, just like the previous M1 iMac, the 24 inch iMac still has two different models that you need to be made aware of. The entry level 24 inch iMac is a separate model that only has two Thunderbolt USB-C ports on the back, while the 1499 model, or all of the more expensive models, have those ports and then an additional two USB-C ports on the back, but that's not the only difference. It also comes with a weaker M2 chip that comes with an eight core GPU instead of the full 10 core GPU. And the base model also lacks an ethernet connection, which is found in the power brick on the four port model. On top of that, the Touch ID Magic Keyboard is still exclusive by default for the more expensive model. And if you want that Touch ID Magic Keyboard or ethernet uh, power brick on the base level model, you need to pay an additional $30 for the ethernet power brick or an additional $50 for the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID. And if you're buying those additional accessories on the base level iMac, you might as well just spec it up to the mid-level configuration to get those uh, accessories added on for free. I mean, it's not free, you're technically paying more money, right? But at that point, it's like, well, why not get all the other nice upgrades that come with that iMac, like the additional two USB-C ports. And I love those accessories, right? The magic keyboard, the mouse, the trackpad, they're all color matched to the iMac that you buy. And even the power cable and charging cables are color matched. And the power cord attaches magnetically to the back of the iMac for a seamless connection. It's one of those small details that I love on the 24 inch iMac. This product is so well thought out. At every small little design detail that this next part makes me absolutely crazy. The accessories I'm giving Apple such credit for, the this you know forethought and all this attention to detail, all this care that they put into the 24 inch iMac originally, and now they're still shipping it with USB-C to lightning cables. 
And that also means that yes, the color matching Magic Keyboard, the color matching Magic Trackpad, the color matching Magic Mouse still have a lightning port and the mouse still charges upside down. But yeah, anyway, the, it, who cares about that? The port, a port that was designed to be an iPhone port is still with us in 2023 and into 2024 now, even after Apple killed the lightning port on the iPhone just a month ago. And it makes it even more awkward because every other port end on a modern Mac, from the iMac to the Mac Mini to the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, the Mac Studio, the Mac Pro, all have USB-C ports. I, I just don't understand how this happened. Like why, why Apple? Why did you release this product with these accessories still being charged by the lightning port? The more I think about it, the more I realize there's other examples of the ports that you've changed on other devices to, to accommodate the switch over to USB-C. The Apple TV remote switched over to charging on the USB-C standard. The Apple TV remote and not your Mac accessories? The Mac isn't a higher priority than the remote on the Apple TV? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I invented the piano key necktie. I invented it. <laughs> So yeah, this is just baffling to me. I don't feel like there was a crazy rush to upgrade the 24 inch iMac. Yes, it was the last Mac that needed to be updated to the newer chip, but to, to upgrade this Mac without USB-C accessories and including a USB-C to USB-C cable, I feel like puts like a small blight on the whole announcement to me because it's just so clear that the lightning port doesn't have a future. It is dead and the only device devices, I guess, and accessories that are going to support it are these Mac accessories. It is weird to me that Apple is shipping these otherwise great iMacs with all of this attention to detail with lightning cables and lightning accessories one month after Apple killed the lightning port by removing it from the iPhone. Bizarre. It is just bizarre. There's no other word for it. Sorry for the small rant there, but I just had to speak my mind. I think this is a confusing move by Apple, but does that mean that you shouldn't buy an iMac because it ships with a USB-C to lightning cable or that the keyboard and all the other accessories are still being charged with a lightning port? No, it is a minor inconvenience. It's not the end of the world to charge these accessories with an included lightning cable and, and they do last a long time on battery life. It's not like you're gonna be charging these things all the time and you could just keep the lightning cable right next to the iMac or plugged in all the time, right? And, and if it really does bother you, you can buy a wide variety of USB-C mice or Bluetooth keyboards to connect to your Mac. So yeah, it's annoying. It, it doesn't make sense considering all the attention to detail they gave this Mac, but at the end of the day, it is not a deal breaker. But again, it is weird. All right, so should you buy an M3 iMac? Well, despite my complaints, I still think that it is such a beautiful all-in-one computer, and I have no doubt that the M3 chip is going to be a snappy performer in a device, especially for you know this class of device. If you like the idea of having an all-in-one computer that comes with a you know built-in and a, and a really good 4.5K Retina display, really good built-in speakers, a decent 1080p webcam, and basically comes with everything you need right in the box to get up and running, then yeah, I still think the M3 iMac is going to be a unique computing experience. I used a M1 24-inch iMac to run this channel for a while, and I was surprised how well it ran, so I can only imagine this M3 version is going to be even more capable. If you still want an Apple desktop, but you would rather make your own decisions on what monitor, speaker, webcam, or other accessories you wanna pair with your Mac, then you should check out the M2 Mac Mini instead. It is an insane value at $599, and it's $700 cheaper than the 24-inch iMac. Yes, it still ships with an older M2 chip, but honestly, I don't think that's the biggest deal for the type of customer uh, these computers are targeting. But yeah, that is the confusing, the baffling 24 inch iMac update. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the 24 inch iMac upgrade and are you planning on getting one? If you are, let me know. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave me a like, subscribe to the channel for a full review of the iMac coming soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.